Hey everybody, it's a Rug Mizu here. Welcome back to the channel. I have some super good news for you. I have finally hit gold in Valorant after playing so many games. And if you know, you know, I made a video earlier in April on how I got out of bronze and hit silver. And after that, I kind of took a break, played a whole bunch of other games in the meantime, and came back recently after watching the VCT. So a couple weeks ago, I decided to play again, decided to grind. And let me tell you, even this last match here in order to hit gold was a doozy. And I was not playing well at all. I felt the pressure on myself for this match, even though I'm prone to not feeling too much pressure. However, I felt the pressure in trying to hit gold right before the year ended. So luckily, I was able to get two key picks off right away. And if you notice, everybody's looking to the left. So I kind of preconditioned it where I played the same play three rounds in a row. However, I was hiding on this side specifically. They probably assumed that I was going to be there again on the last round. But instead, I decided to hide on the other side. So a little bit of a mind game right there. But it's little stuff like that will help you win rounds. And luckily, I was able to provide value to the team. But for the most part, I'm super excited to hit gold and I kind of wanted to share you guys my experience of what I did in order to hit gold and also what the play style of what I experienced from gold players. So, you know, everybody's rank journey is going to be a little bit different, but I kind of wanted to tell you guys what my experience is like because I had so many supporter comments of how I can improve in my last video that I read. I definitely read all your comments of how you can get better, how I need to aim, how I need to pre-aim and stuff like that. And there's also some comments saying that I'm just extremely lucky to even climb up and that there's no way I was able to climb up. Well, look at where I'm at now. I'm in gold and you know, it's official for sure. But for the most part, you know, it's Valorant. There's going to be games where you carry. There's going to be games where you get carried. There's going to be games where you kind of just do okay and just do your job. And that's just how it is. But there's stuff that you can do immediately in order to get better. And I kind of want to give you guys my tips on how I immediately improve my aim, which is pretty crucial in Valorant. And there's so many things you can do. For example, you can buy this skin. It gives you a buff in your aim. But in reality, it's going to take some hard work, some luck, and also some training as well. But for the most part, some of these tips that I'm about to give you, hopefully you can apply it to your games right away and hopefully make you recognize some of the mistakes you may or may ha not have been making. So let's start where I started at. So I am currently on a website called TRN Valorant Tracker. So this is where I'm able to see my cumulative stats for the most part. It's pretty accurate. So in episode two, act two, I tried to get out of bronze, which I did succeed, but it took a lot of matches. Actually, I was really bad. So I took 141 matches in order to get out of bronze and I have about a 54% win rate, 6.3% headshot rate and a kill assist death ratio of 1.38. If I go to now, technically I'm still supposed to improve, right? Well, if you look here, I played way less matches. So I have a super high win rate. So I have a 59% win rate now. My headshots have gone up. It used to be 6.3%. Now it's 10.3%. So that was a significant increase. And I was able to accomplish that by changing the way that I played. And my kill assist death ratio is relatively around the same, but it's down by a little bit. But for the most part, I feel like I'm more accurate with my shots. And you know, if you look at some of the other stats, like my top weapon, like 16% of my shots are headshots. I could definitely improve on that. And I definitely am going to try to get better. But for the most part, I feel like I'm improving at this game. And you can also have some nifty stats if you check out my match history. If you look at all my matches in total, if I go to all 44 matches of my rank, if I hit load more matches, I'm gonna load the rest up real quick. If you see here, my first rank matches were in December 1st. So this is where I did my placements and then I climbed all the way up and eventually hit gold. And I did it over the course of eight different days in December. So it may take you more days, it may take you less days depending on how many games you need. But for the most part, I just wanted to show you that it's definitely achievable. All right, so let's get on to the tips. So one of my first tips for you is to improve your aim. And as basic as this sounds, it's a huge thing in Valorant and a huge thing in any shooter game. And there are so many things that you can do in order to improve your aim. However, one of the biggest things that I did was to actually enter the practice tool every single time I loaded up Valorant. And I like to enter the range and for my settings, I like to put the bots on medium and armor on and also infinite ammo. 
And the two weapons that I consistently use are the Sheriff and the Vandal. And this ensures that I have to try to hit headshots and accurately defeat my enemies. And what I like to do is I like to hit a score of 25 or above three times in a row. And if I can do that three times in a row, I feel pretty much ready and warmed up for the day. And I can practice on any mode, whether or not I want to do deathmatch, unrated, or spike rush, or just head straight into competitive right after. If I'm not shooting shots well in the shooting range, well, if I play a game, I'm probably not going to do well in the game as well. So for the most part, I like to use the shooting range as a gauge on how accurate my shots are. And another huge thing, what you can do in the shooting range as well, that really helped me was I lowered my sensitivity. So I used to play this game actually at a high DPI. I believe I was playing at 1800 DPI and I lowered my sensitivity to, I guess like 0.7 or so, but it was still too high. So I pretty much changed up my sensitivity. You can either choose to change your DPI first or change your sensitivity more. But for the most part, my DPI is on 1600, but my sensitivity is 0.15. So this calculates to around 240 DPI. So that's the DPI that I play Valorant on. You may be asking, why did I turn down basically my DPI and sensitivity for so low? Well, it's because with a lower sensitivity, I'm able to make more controlled, more accurate shots. When I had a higher DPI before, I was making wild swings. I couldn't accurately hit my target. And Valorant is huge on precision. For me, I noticed a definite improvement and I could tell by my shots as well that I was getting more accurate at trying to aim well because instead of flailing around my mouse trying to hit a shot, well, you really need that first shot accuracy for certain weapons. So, you know, you really want to try to make sure you have precise aim in Valorant. And lowering DPI and my sensitivity definitely helped me. Another thing that also helps me with my aim is, it may seem a little silly, but I try not to wear hoodies or long sleeve shirts or sweaters because I'm used to having my arm glide across the mouse pad. But if I'm wearing a sweater, sometimes I can't make that shot or sometimes I stop short from aiming at my target. And it really messes me up, honestly. And it may not mess you up, but personally for me, I try to have the same setup every time. So I'm always wearing a t-shirt when I'm playing this game, or if I'm wearing a long sleeve, I'll roll up my shirt. Another thing that I notice in not only in silver, but also in bronze is a lot of teams and a lot of players like to play really aggressively. And some teams don't even change their habits. For example, in this silver match, this team kept pushing aggressively and did not learn their lesson and decided to keep lurking over and over again even though their plays just kept getting shut down. So the Reyna and the Astra kept coming at first, but after a while, eventually Phoenix started coming. So one thing that I like to suggest is that if your aggressive plays aren't working, you may have to rethink your strategy. and. This is where you have to think, hey, maybe I have to play defensively. Maybe I just have to wait till they push on site and then play for the retake. So there are things that you can do in order to avoid this. But if you keep trying to brute force and it's not working, even after five, six, seven rounds, then, you know, I guess you're just going to end up losing because if a team already knows how to counter your strategy, well, you're going to have to switch it up to see what you can do in order to get them to react differently. Because if the team keeps effectively countering the, your strategy, they're not going to change. You're going to have to change. And the moment you change, well, they're going to have to change their strategy to counter your strategy this time. And you kind of have to freshen things up. So there's not a one-time solution for everything in Valorant, but there are things that you can do in order to switch up the plays that you make. My next tip for you is to pre-aim. So I got this tip from most of your YouTube comments and also some videos I've seen as well. But pre-aiming allows you to quickly get headshots or quickly get kills, hopefully. But for the most part, a lot of it is really helpful. I've gotten many rapid quick kills off the start of the round, especially on common places where people like to peek. There's sometimes there's no reason for you to peek, but you know, a lot of people like to play really aggressive in bronze and silver. But for the most part, if you pre-aim most of your weapons, then you can get a kill most of the time. However, you have to play case by case scenario. If you're in the lobby where you know there's tons of people crouching all the time, maybe you don't start pre-aiming for headshots. Maybe you just have to go for body shots. And hopefully if they're crouching, you get a kill like that. So it's pretty tricky to try to do the pre-aiming on every single match. But for the most part, I feel like 
If you're pre-aiming, start at the beginning of the match, play for a feel of the lobby. If there's a lot of people crouching, then you switch it up. Overall though, pre-aiming with your cursor will help you out overall in the long run. My next tip to you is to always assume that the round is not over till the next round begins because you should always be tense and on edge. I know there's many people that just like to relax because hey, they're saving, they're probably not gonna plant. There's so little time left, but you should always be prepared. So I'm just staying safe in the TP just in case someone comes and look, raise comes and then, oh, I get a second one. I know we're already up ahead in rounds, but I'm just decreasing their chances of coming back. They lose two guns, they lose some more money. It's gonna be harder for them to buy weapons. And you know, you just want to make sure that you always have enough money to buy the best weapons each round because you know, as you climb higher into ranks, you know, economy is a huge thing I've started to notice. And for example, I already know that I probably can't win a 4v1, but the timer ticks, they lose an op and a second weapon. I just hurt their chances even further in trying to come back. Although this next topic is not necessarily a tip, uh, more of a general advice is to always do your best. For example, I did my best in this match. I was the MVP. I had a performance bonus and got 28. And for the most part, if you always try your best, whether you're top fragging or even assisting, you'll get a performance bonus. So I thought it was pretty interesting that I got a performance bonus for doing well as a Sentinel, playing Killjoy. I got a lot of frags that game and I was doing pretty well. And also in my next game, I also got a huge amount of points. I got 34 actually. I was pretty surprised by the amount that I was getting as Chambers. I was pretty proud of that as well. And what I was even most surprised about is that I got a performance bonus playing Sage. And I wasn't even the top fragger. I even lost that game. So I only lost 11 points instead. So if you keep doing your best, whether you're winning, you're losing, no matter what character you're playing, whether you're top fragging or trying to have a high assist or impact on the game, the game will recognize your efforts and award you those points. So always try your best no matter what. If you want to see some of the lobbies that I've been playing in, here's a snapshot of five different lobbies or so, but majority of my lobbies are full of high silver players, gold players, and sometimes there's the occasional platinum player on my team or the other team. And it's very noticeable when the platinum player is in my lobby. They usually are the ones crushing it or crushing me. So for the most part, uh, I feel like as I go up in rank, I'm playing against higher elo players. But sometimes I definitely feel like I'm playing in low elo and I'm low elo myself. So you know, it is what it is. You just have to play every single match with the intent to win. Never give up as cheesy as it sounds. Because you know, even if you whiff all your shots, there's chances that your enemy also whiff all their shots. And you just gotta play with total confidence, no matter what. Always try to play as if you can win and that you're going to win. This is the kind of mindset that you're gonna have to have when you play rank. No matter if it's Valorant, no matter if it's another game, you have to play with the mindset that you're gonna try to win, strategize, and try to outplay your opponents at all costs. Hopefully my experiences and these tips really help you out on your rank adventures. I know some of these tips may be super basic, but sometimes we need to focus on the basics before we get better at the game. So you know, have little goals in mind, improve little by little, take away what you can from each game in order to improve yourself and you know, eventually you'll get there if you try to hit the goal that you set out to achieve. And you know, I definitely hit my goal and maybe my goal for next year is going to try to hit platinum. It's definitely going to be harder. I really know what I need to work on. I need to focus on aiming better, pre-aim, aiming down sights less, and also learning how to swing while moving as well. So there's a lot of things that I can do in order to improve on. So I'm enjoying this game. If you're not enjoying this game, maybe you need to rethink that. But for the most part, I'm setting myself to hopefully hit platinum by next year. So maybe not by the end of the year next year, maybe earlier in a couple months. But for the most part, I'm going to try to improve as much as I can because I really like this game overall. But thank you for watching. If you made it to the end of this video, I really appreciate it. Leave me down a comment down below of your goals for next year in Valorant or maybe your goals in general or how your journey is in rank and what your rank experience is like. But for the most part, thanks for watching. I hope you guys have a great new year. Stay safe out there and I'll catch you next time in 2022. Oh my, you are different.